Um, very excited. And of course, my guest tonight, I don't want to waste too much time uh, because this man is a star. Um, I first discovered, I don't actually remember how I first discovered him. Um, probably one of his uh, many famous slash legendary uh, YouTube clips of him playing along uh, with stuff. And uh, it was just so amazing. I was like, who is this cat? And um, I immediately became a Mono Neon fan. And I met him at Newport for the first time. I think that was in, uh, I can't remember if it was 2017 or 2018 when he played with DJ Logic. And uh, man, we have all been uh, big fans of his. We love him. And uh, I'm not going to waste that much time. Let's just bring Brother uh, Thomas in right now. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear, give it all up for him. There he is. <laughs> Hello. What's happening, my brother? I'm cool. Oh, no, you're more than cool. Yeah. <laughs> man, thanks for being my guest this evening, man. I really uh, appreciate you're welcome. it. You're welcome. Man, you are just, um, you are one hell of an artist man i'm a big fan of yours um on the base and off the base and um i want to i don't even know where to begin man let's talk about if you don't mind let's talk about memphis because i know okay. that's your hometown yeah and uh a whole lot of soul comes out of that town uh paint a picture of of the memphis that you grew up in well i grew up around a lot of blues a lot of southern soul music so that's really my foundation yeah with how I play bass and how I write music. Cause my dad's a yeah. bass player. My grandfather's a piano player. You know, my grandfather played with Ron Carter and Billy Higgins. And my, my dad played with Denise LaSalle and Pop Staples and, um, right. and, and people, so a lot of Southern soul stuff. So that's really my foundation when it comes to music. All this other stuff right. is really just me exploring. So, yeah. I love it, man. I love yeah. it. Like I hear all of the, uh, you know, cats like George Coleman, Charles Lloyd, Booker Little. Um, I know there was a, a, a whole generation of legendary jazz musicians that came out of Memphis before yeah. the Stax era. Mm -hmm. But I know a, a lot of people tend to think that other than Beale Street, there isn't a whole lot of stuff going on in Memphis. But, you know, somebody yeah. like you uh, debunks that myth. So did you go around playing with a lot of different cats around around Memphis? Yeah, primarily church. I started, you know, really getting into playing in church. And uh, that, that really, you know, shaped me who I am today. I learned a lot from uh, organ players and keyboard players from church. So right. my my lesson. That's how I started, you know. Yeah. Man, I love the uh, the videos that you make with, with your grandma. Yeah. Man, I was just with her today. I was just oh, with her today. Doing, man? She cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't met her, but tell her I'm a big fan of hers as well. Okay. Man, I love how you you, you mix the um, the gospel, the funk, uh, improvisation, art music, if, if if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. And 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 most of all, you are funny as hell, man. <laughs> I get. <guess>. Yeah. <laughs> man, listen, I was on an yeah. airplane going up to Montreal. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, that's when I sent you that text. Yeah, I'm sitting there and I was drinking something, and I saw your your cat booty juice video. Yeah, and I, I literally I was like, <laughs> and so this woman next to me, she was like, "Oh my god, what are you watching?" I was like, "Yo, you gotta see this." And so, uh, man, I I haven't laughed that hard in a long time. So thank you very much for that. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> now, what? Um, I mean, was that a conscious thing, man, to say, look, music needs to have more humor in it? I mean, like... Uh, I don't know. I just, like the, like the videos I do, I just, I, I mean, I'm, I'm very inspired by Frank Zappa. So, yes. And another guy named Harmetto Pasco. I think I'm pronouncing his Absolutely. name. Absolutely. Right. So yep. that, you know, that comes from that, but it really just comes from me just being who I am, and I just try to find ways to put it in music. So. Right, yeah. right. Did you yeah. ever get to... um? Did you ever get to meet George Duke at all? I actually played with him when he came to Memphis with Kurt Whalum. It was like um, some, something for stacks. And I, yeah, I did play with him one, one time. Yeah, yeah, because uh, I used to yeah. love to hear George talk about all the stuff that he learned from Frank Zappa. Yep. What, what yep. a bad cat. Yep. 
What, uh, do you have a favorite Frank Zappa album? Uh, of course, the stuff he did with Mothers of Invention. Um, what's the what is it called? Joe's Garage right. or something? Apostrophe. Um, there's yes. so many. It's like apostrophe. Yes, yeah. That's my joint there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to ask you about um, um, your your first project. The, the first project that I know of. Mm -hmm. Um, it was the uh the, the introspection of of Mono Neon. Oh man, Jesus Christ! I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, because you know, you do this thing on there where you got like some some radio sounds on there, like the the the, the radio frequency joints, mm -hmm. and when I was a kid, I remember hearing this record by Bob James. And mm -hmm. and yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Bob James, like Touchdown mm -hmm. Bob James, mm -hmm. Taxi Bob James, mm -hmm. uh, Foreplay Bob James. And before he got into that, um, he did some very hardcore uh, avant-garde records in the 60s for ESP Disc. And he did this album called Explosions, okay. where he's mm -hmm. got like those uh, radio frequencies on there. Okay. And uh, when I first heard your joint, I went, I wonder if he knows this album. I never, I never heard of that album. I'm going to check it out, though. Yeah, 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 man. It's like I never heard, like, uh, you know, people mixing radio frequencies in with uh, improvised music before. So, um, man, your, your whole sense of exploration and experimentation, um, do you do... Are, are are you a visual artist? I mean, I know you got the whole you, you know this wonderful concept you have with like you know the way you dress and, mm -hmm. and the way you hook your bass up and all that kind of stuff. But like, um, it, you seem to me to be one of those kind of cats that can make art out of anything. <laughs> I, I I wish I could paint. I I mean, if I tried, I probably could, but I really don't draw. I can't really draw or paint, so that's why I dress the way I do. I put everything yeah. on my base. Anything I can find, I put it like stickers, socks. That comes right. from Dadaism. Like I like Dadaism and all that surrealism stuff. Right. So right. that's you know, and like the radio stuff you was talking about, that came from John Cage. You know, right. I was influenced by him. So it's like I'm, all the experimental stuff. Then I got the blues, and I always, I always just wanted to have the experimental stuff, but also have that blues with me. So yeah, that's 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 what I be thinking about. That's all the time. Yeah. See, man, I I, I I've been trying to tell folks in yeah. the jazz world, particularly for so many years, there's so much, uh, uh, you get lauded for experimentation, but my favorite experimenters always have a, a little sense of gravity with that blues. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. You yeah. know? Yep. Yep. And you got that, man. Thank God. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> man, I specifically want to ask you about an artist that I know we both love, because he's in one of your song titles, and that's Johnny Taylor. Yes. Yes. I grew up listening <laughs> to him. Like with my grandma, everybody, my aunties, like all the blue stuff. Uh, ZZ Hill, Bobby ZZ Hill, Bobby Blue Ooh, Bland, on, uh, and Peoples, all, all the stuff that comes. Like I, I grew up on this, so it's like that's my right. that's my childhood. It's in my blood. So, and it's just Billy Jackson. It's just comforting. Yes, yes, yeah. all that stuff. And my dad played on some of that stuff with Denise LaSalle and all that stuff. So, right, that's my foundation, and I always go back to that just to just to feel okay with life. I just listened to that music. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yes, brother. Um, yeah. You know, the great Russell Malone got one of his first gigs um, playing with Clarence Carter. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And um, stroking. Stroking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, man, I want to ask you uh, about, you know, if you don't mind my asking, I know everybody who ever talks to you ask you about this so forgive me for being the latest one it's all good tell us the print story when uh when when how, how did y'all hook up
I heard he saw some some of my videos online, and um, his management contacted me late 2014, and I started working there officially early 2015 till he passed. Um, he hired me to play with Judith Hill before I actually started playing with him. Okay. And like late 2015, that's when I started playing with his band, whatever he was trying to do. And I started recording right. with him. And the last time I was with him was February of the year he passed, 2016. So it was, it was a quick thing, but it was, it was life changing just right. being with him. Right. So, and, and I can I, only I, imagine. I'm still not over it because like I was just with him, you know, really starting to get close to him. And he just right. passed away. But right. that's why right. I, I started writing songs and started just really writing songs. That's why I really started to focus on after he passed because he right. was really into songwriting. So that's why I started writing my own little lyrics and stuff. Right, yeah. right. How yeah. often would you say, I mean, like, would you say he wrote a song or two per day? I mean, because it seems like that kind of output that that man had was uh, unprecedented. <laughs> I remember he came into a rehearsal with uh, a piece of paper with lyrics on it. He was just trying stuff. Yeah. And and I was like, okay. I mean, he, just being around him was so inspiring. Just looking back on it, when I was there, I wasn't thinking that way because I, I just wanted to play some music with him. But now, since he's not here anymore, now I think about, like, I was actually with Prince. Like, that's the GOAT, bro. Like, and for him to really embrace me, that's, like, really crazy. Because he's seen it all. He's played with everybody. So I guess right. he's seen something special in me. So that's why I really I hold on to that. Oh, hey man, I can dig it. And and yep. uh, we we ain't Prince, but we all see something special in you, man. You, you I man too. I try. <laughs> I try. Man, who was the first? Um, who was the face? The first bass player to kind of blow your mind? I know your father plays bass, so does mine. Right. So was it Dad or was it somebody else? Of course, it was my father. Yeah. But what really changed me was uh, Anthony Jackson. That really, really? That, that really set me down. And um, um, a friend of mine named Jackie Clark gave me an album called What You're Going to Do For Me by Shaka Khan. And I, till this day, I still go back to the album because it's, 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 it's just amazing how he's an artist within a session. He's like, he's, cause like Nathan East, he's playing a part. You, know, you really don't know it's Nathan East, but you know it's Anthony Jackson every time you hear him. When he's playing with a band, yes, every time. Indeed, but he he plays the part, but you know it's him. And I always wanted that for myself as a bass player with any band that you know it's me, yeah, not you know. That's with right. Nathan, with like with Nathan East, you know he's playing the part, you know, but you really don't know if it's him till you read the credits. But if you hear Anthony, you know it's him. You know it's Anthony. I yeah. want that. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, I'll give you a little little insider history, man. Yeah. Uh, my father replaced Anthony Jackson and Billy Paul's band in 1972. Okay, okay. Yeah. And so when I first met Anthony, I, like, I didn't know that. Like, my dad withheld that information from me, you know. Mm -hmm. And the uh, uh, first time I met Mr. Jackson, he was like, uh, how's Lee doing? I was like, uh, oh, you, you know my dad? He's like, mm -hmm. oh, man, your, your dad took my gig when I left, you know. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? <laughs> so, man, these, these lines, you know, between... Anthony, your father, the Barkays, uh, you know, my dad, the Delphonics, who he was playing with when I was born. We both got So do you know Ronnie school. do you know about Ronnie Baker? Baker Absolutely. Ronnie Baker? He's one of my yep. favorites too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All all the Philly legends there, man. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Man. Um, you mentioned Kirk Whalem, who was one yeah. of my favorite musicians in the entire world. He's one of my mm -hmm. favorite people, one of my favorite musicians. Uh, because he can go all kinds of different places, but he always comes back to the yep. gospel and the yep. blues. Yep. Um, give us a few words about about Kurt. Well, my Kurt and my dad used to play together back in the day. They, you know, they grew up with each other. And um, actually, I actually subbed for a bass player from Dallas with Kirk, and Hamilton Harden was playing keys. That was, I think that was my first time playing with him. But just Kurt is such an amazing person. I just, I just, just really love him. Just musically, as a person, as an artist, and he's so humble, but he's a killer musician. Yes, he is. And, uh, just, I just, I just love his spirit. Like, just overall, besides the music, he's just an amazing person. I'm not just yes, saying that is. because I'm just, I know him, but like, he's like seriously just so amazing. And I yes, actually have a song with him. It's called Superman. He's playing a saxophone solo on, that, and that was such an honor to have him on that. It's like. 
just the Curry is just amazing, bro. That's all I really got to say. Yeah. He's just a beautiful person, bro. Really. Yeah. 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 Shout out. Shout out to the great Kirk Whale. We love him. Yep. Um, you spent some time at, at Berkeley and um, mm -hmm. you, you studied with Fuse up there? Yes. That's, that's, the, that's pretty much the only thing I enjoyed at Berkeley. Not to <laughs> down Berkeley, but yeah. <laughs> right. Right. That, right. Was, that was a great experience. And another guy named Lenny Stallworth. Who used uh -huh. to play with Rock? You know Lenny? Yeah, not not personally, but not, I, I'm okay. certainly hip to him. Yeah, he used to play with War Hard Grove. He played with Kenny Garrett, and he was right. another influence because he was from the South. He kind of reminded me of, of my dad, so right. I really grab He's not here anymore, but I really gravitated towards him. So yeah. he was a big yeah. inspiration. David uh, David Fujinski and Lenny. Yeah, those were two. Yeah. yeah, the Fuse man. Um, yeah, uh, Dave Fujinski is one of those kind of players that. Uh, I'm still kind of surprised that sort of like the, particularly the jazz community uh, at large, they kind of might not be hip to him. You know, it's like uh, yeah, he, he's underrated, bro. Like for real. Yes, he is. He really is. He he the one that got me, not to show off, but this is like a quarter tone bass, microtonal yeah. bass. So I really got. He's really inspired me with the microtonal stuff, and he's also into visual arts. So I can. So we really connected. He's into all the German expressionism stuff. Right, so right. Just being around him really, like that was the only thing I really enjoyed at Berkeley because I felt at home with him and playing sure, music with sure. him. And I got a chance to play with Jack DeJanet because of him. And like, all, like he's, like he's the one like that really inspired a lot of a lot of the things that I do, the microtonal right. stuff, this, this, the quarter tone stuff, like all that stuff. Like I love Fuse. If you listen to Fuse, I love you, Fuse. Hey, we, we that's right. We love you, Fuse. I, I, I play quarter tones too. It's, it's called playing out of tune on the upright bass. Ah, that's cool too. I got a fretless <laughs> too. You can play all that stuff. Yeah. I got an upright over here. I really don't play it much. Where well, you can see it. Yeah. I try. Uh -oh. stay, I, I, really, I don't play it as much. Thing, I need, yeah, I, no, I, won't, I need to practice on it. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you start doing on the acoustic bass what you do on the electric bass. I'm going to switch to. Uh, to trumpet. No, I actually, try. I, I won't do that. No, that's cool. You the, the you the man, bro. I can't I can't catch up with you. <laughs> no, bro. You you doing some great stuff, man. Now I'm tell trying. me tell, what was the first time you had the inkling to play along with a video? That's some of the greatest stuff I've ever seen in my life, man. Uh primarily because of Frank Zappa and Har Metal Pascal. Right. I, I heard some of their stuff, and there's another guy named, he doesn't show his face, I think uh, Pablo Delgado. Mm. I think he's Spanish or Brazilian or something, and I seen one of his videos, and I started playing along with his stuff, and I said, well, I, I want to I do it my way, and I started just doing it my way, and I just kept on doing it. So yeah. Pablo yeah. Delgado, Frank Zappa, and Hard Metal Pasco are really the, my influences for the speech to music stuff. Right, right. I'm curious, man. Do, do you have a do you have a favorite actor? Um, I'm really into like black sportation movies. I'm like an old, really old soul. So I love all the Richard Pryor movies, Which Way uh -huh. Is Up, Bustin' Loose. Um, right. So primarily, um, I guess Richard Pryor, you know. Right. And right. also right. Uh, the Sidney Portier movies, you know, with Bill Cobb and all that. Stuff. Right. Right, right. I just right, love right. all those old movies. The soundtracks, it's just it's just warm. I like all that. I don't know. I just I'm an old soul. I can't help it. But hey man, yeah. and, and don't help it. I love that you do that. So I will tell you okay. something else. You know, uh Brian Blade and I are, are big time. See, a lot of people don't know this about Brian Blade. He's also a connoisseur of all those black movies from the seventies. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody underestimates Blade because you know it's always, always so quiet, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's mm -hmm. pure, you know, but mm -hmm. Um, usually when Brian and I play a gig together, you will appreciate this. Most don't, but I come into the room and I go, Seymour Petty Groove. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and and we we pick up on the scene and just and, mm -hmm. and just continue. But yep. uh that's that that is awesome, man. So are you familiar with all those comedy records from that period as well? Tell about the Richard Pryor stuff? Yeah, I like everybody, you know, Flip, Some Flip Wilson, George Carlin. Oh, I love Flip. I love Flip yeah. Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. So what what are you working on now, brother? I'm actually I'm working, on working on another album. I'm, I'm putting it out next year. It's called um, uh -oh. Quilted Stereo. Yeah. Quilted Stereo? Yeah. I got Mavis Staples on it. 
and George Clinton. So I'm really living out my childhood on this album with, with those duets. So, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Let me, I got to let that sink in for a second. What? What? <laughs> Mavis and George? Ooh, yeah. Come on, man. Like, I'm actually singing a song with Mavis. She, I got the first verse. Then she got the second verse. It's like, I'm, you know, I'm just living my childhood. I want to do a, a thing with Bobby Rush. I was talking to my manager about, like, I want to, I want to do something with Bobby. Like, I just, I just want to live out my childhood. Like, I grew up listening to these people, so I want to play music with them, you know? Yeah. Hey, yeah, man. See, you, you, you are touching on so many important things here, man. Legacy, history, creativity, um, imagination. You just, uh, you got, you got uh, uh, humor. You yep. know, you, you, you got it all. You got it all covered, man. Now, a lot of the stuff that you do with your grandmother, I've seen, like you guys do like spirituals and some gospel mm -hmm. songs. So you got the, uh, you have that part covered as well. Now, tell us some of like uh, your church influences or, or something that the church put into you with uh, that, that, you know, is, is still there, be it something specifically spiritual or is this something of church culture or all of the above or Rap well i learned how to i learned how to play with a band by playing in church because i learned so much by just watching the organ player the keyboard player because they, they used to be on my butt because i used to be very very yeah. i'm still shy but i used to be very bashful in church i used to have my head down a lot when i used yeah. to play and they used to get on me like hold your head up bro so you get the cues and stuff so i learned a <laughs> lot from that and just just, right, just right. being in church and knowing how to because in church, it's like you learn so much music at a short amount of time. They, you know, they send you to see these, listen to it. You got to be ready for Sunday right. service, revival, all this stuff, or like a concert, like a big concert service. Like I learned all that stuff from being in church, and I, and I carry that with me. So it's like it's more, more so the music side. It's more, I guess it's spiritual too, because it's, it's something in me that I started going to my grandma's house recording songs with her because I st the older I get, I start to realize that how much – of an influence she is on me musically. Right, right. Like right. the older I get, I start to realize, even my mom too, like I start to realize how much of an influence these people are. So yeah. I just start to really embrace that in my writing and the way I play and yeah. just the way I just think about life. So I'm just, I don't know where I'm going with my music, but I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to live and just let it take its course. That's so yep. beautiful, man. Well, you know, yep. you just you just keep following that vibration wherever it takes you, and you know, we we riding with you, partner. I'm I'm hanging in there. <laughs> yep. So, who's going to be with you in your group uh, at at Newport? Uh, Mike Mitchell on drums. Oh, okay, my man. I think he's playing with me. Yeah, and some of the guys I play with uh, with Ghost Note two guitar players, Peter Knusen on guitar, Xavier Lynn. A keyboard player that we he just started playing with me, a name Charlie Brown, mm -hmm. and just me on bass and vocals. Yep. Ooh, well, and man, farts. we can't wait for. Yeah, that, hey, you gotta, <laughs> you, you gotta have the gas up in there. Yeah. Man. Come on now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wish I could make. I, I gotta ask you a, a, a nerdy tech question right now. Oh, so, dude. when. I would say about 20 years ago when I had uh, my band, the Christian McBride band, I was trying out all these different pedals and, and, and all this stuff on my acoustic bass. It was really hard because, you know, like from the acoustic bass, you got to have a pickup that tracks well mm -hmm, that goes mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. into those pedals. So a lot of times that stuff, it kind of worked, but it didn't. You're like, you know, sometimes I would have the, the, the delay and mm -hmm. the uh and and the distortion on at the same time and then like you know you could like I, you know i thought my amp was gonna blow up and and, and, and the bass itself was gonna blow up so when you when you get the fart sounds uh, i love how i'm saying this i love i love how you open this all up um how uh <laughs> what 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 do you use to get that i mean like the uh what i think i got it hold on uh where is it I mean, like you farting in the mic and like you uh, sampling no. that joint. Oh, no, I got it right here. Hold on, let me take it out. It's a pedal. Oh, okay. You yeah. know, I actually thought you were actually farting when I first uh, got hip to that. Mm -hmm. And then, it's a fart and, pedal. okay, 
I got about ah, four of these. Okay. I, I can't stop buying them. I'm so addicted. <laughs> yep. And I use the dry mode, and it sounds better dry. But yeah, this, this is it. Ah, there we go. Yep. All right, I'm 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 gonna cop that and see if it works for for the upright face. Yeah, do it. Um, yeah, I might have to bust my old uh, pedal board back out, man. I still got it. I um, just to let you know, I used to listen to uh, Live at the Tonic. Is that the name of one of your albums? Yes, sir. I used to, I used to listen to that all the time. Just to let you know, I'm you know, I'm a big fan, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that. Yeah. Well, well, brother, I got I got to tell you the fact that you even have that record, is, man. Um, yes, that, yes. I'm honored, brother. Thank you. Yeah, yes, sir. Um, you know, I didn't realize until like, you know, not very long ago, somebody said, "Hey, man, how come Live and Tonic ain't up on the, uh, you know, on the streaming services?" Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's it's not. And uh, so yeah, I got to figure out a way to get Live and Tonic back out. Yeah, there, that's man. one of my. But, I man, love I'm, it, Alan. Oh, yeah. thank you, bro. I'm yeah. deeply honored. Yeah. Um, we are at the half hour mark, and um, as you know, ladies and gentlemen, if you go down to the bottom of your phone and you see the question mark there, put your questions in there for Mono Neon, and um, we see we got some questions there already. And um, what are they saying? Yeah, let me see. Uh, yeah, what are they saying? Okay, there ain't no questions in there yet. So anyway, Do folks, <laughs> don't worry. They're going to be there any minute now. I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but man, I've seen you play now. I saw you play at Newport. I, like I said, I can't remember what year that mm -hmm. was, 2017 or 2018. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was so excited, man. And uh, DJ Logic came running over to me, man. And I mean, he was just like, yo. You gotta meet Mono Nia. and like he, uh, he like grabbed my arm and he pulled me over, and I was like, "I remember there, that." There you are in the flesh. Yeah. And um, uh, oh, see now, look at that. What? Wow, these these questions just flew in, Jack. What is one? I see one okay. about Indian music. Uh, here we go. Let me see. Um, Blackwell asks. Blackwell. He says, okay. what's some good blues music? I'm a bassist looking to get into the blues, but I'm not sure where to start. Uh, I would say, since I'm from Memphis, I would say Ann Peoples, um, who else? James Carr. Um, I don't know, a lot of Southern Soul stuff, just not just blues, but a lot of Southern Soul, a lot of stuff from Malachi Records with Denise LaSalle, Johnny right. Taylor, uh, ZZ Hill, Right. I mean, Al Green, you know, that's Memphis, that's blues. Uh, uh, stuff from Muscle Shoals, too, you know, with David Hood on bass, like that. Amen. Bobby, Bobby Womack, like, you know, I didn't, I didn't know there was David Hood until I started, you know, reading about it. It's like, that's crazy. Right. And, um, right. I mean, just, I guess Johnny Taylor, just some old, by uh, Rance Allen, did, like, some of his old stuff is blues. Woo! You know, Rance and, Allen, come on now. He's another favorite of mine. It's like, amazing. I don't know, just listen to uh, Johnny Taylor, Bobby Womack, uh, Denise said, yeah. just listen to all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, have you seen this uh, this YouTube clip of uh, Bobby Blue Bland with Johnny Taylor and Bobby Rush? I think I have. I think I have. Yeah, man, that's one of my favorite I clips. I watch that. I watch that joint all the time. Jo Johnny Taylor puts something more on all of them. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so great. Um, <laughs> let's see, some more questions here. Um, Post John Remedia, my dear friend, asked, Southern Visionary is mind blowing. What got you into microtonal music? Um, I was I was kind of aware of it, but when I got to Berkeley and I started hanging with David Fugensky, that's what really, you know, shaped me into applying it to music because I, I knew about it, but I wasn't applying it to life and just music. So when I heard him actually put these different tuning systems into grooves, that's what really intrigued me, as opposed to just some sort of scholarly approach to it. it he, he made it approachable. So that's why I'm still today using it. You know, I really don't understand yeah. it, but I, I, I just love it. Like, right. I don't understand a lot of stuff John Cage does, or Stockhausen, right. 
but I just like right. it because it, it opened my mind up to just sounds and appreciating sounds. So right, yeah. right, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that's, that's awesome, bro. Yeah. Um, uh, Michelle Weather seventy nine asks, "Who makes your outfits?" I ain't telling nobody. No, I'm just joking. There's a, there's a few people on, on Instagram. I sometimes I just be searching. I just type in quilts, and, and I found, like, a couple of people that actually make, like, custom stuff. And sometimes I send them quilts, like, from Etsy. I go on Etsy and find a quilt that I really like, and I send it to them, and I tell them, just make a complete set, you know. I got one that's being sent to me now. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Oh, that's killing, man. Yeah. Uh let me see. Um, uh, there's so many good questions here. Uh, okay. This is U Virgo asks, who is your favorite rock bass player of all time? I would probably say Chris Squire. Yeah. That's, that's my favorite. Uh, there you go. Rock bass player. There you go. Yeah. Or John, uh, John I, Deacon. I yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was talking to my stepdad one time. My stepdad is a hardcore, um, like, prog rock, mm -hmm. rock fusion mm -hmm. historian. Like, I didn't know he was that deep in there. And uh, uh, he said, uh, hey, man, what's your favorite Yes record? You know, and uh, I said something like, uh, you know, I said, well, I got familiar <laughs> with Yes with uh, Owner of a Lonely Heart. He's like, no, 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 no. That's 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 bullshit. Yes. <laughs> he said, you, you gotta go back to the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Um. It's so awesome, man. Let me see. Uh, oh, this is a fun question. Um. Forgive me, Samuel. Is it Samuel Stapp or Samuel Tap? Sam Samuel Stapp, I'm gonna assume. Um, your most embarrassing live performance moment. Let me see here. I really, I don't know. Mm. Uh, it wasn't really a performance. I remember I, I was at Paisley with Prince, and Prince said, "My bass sounds like it has a sock on it." And he was coming at me because my I had some dead strings on it. It, it just sounded like shit. So right, right, I, that right, was right. embarrassing. I remember that so much. Like, dude, okay, I didn't even say nothing. I just, I just turned around <laughs> to the amp and act like I was doing some. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't really embarrassing, but I just remember that. Yeah, yeah. So it, yeah. Sound, it sound like you have uh, flat wounds on there. Yeah, right? my strings are dead. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Right. Um, let's see. This is a good question. Um, what do you think defines the Memphis sound relative to other vibes or feels? That is so hard to answer. I don't know. It's, it's, I would say it's really intuitive how, how we play down here and how we just, I don't know. It's just really, it's, it's gritty. It's intuitive. It's dirty. It's, it's not so much how much theory, you know, I mean, of course that's really important, but it's not so much about that. It's really just, can you can you play? Can do you have feel? Right. You know, can you play with a band? You know, can you can you groove? Which is right. all aspects of music, but from here you really gotta have that. If you're from here, you gotta have that. Period. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter who you're playing with, what style you're playing with, it can be anything, but it, you gotta be able to have good feel, a good vibe, and just be able to just play music. Right. 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 Yeah, that's all it is. There you go. That's yeah. in the house. Uh, let me see. Uh, our friend, my homeboy, the great drummer himself, Lil John Roberts. What's up, <laughs> old skillet? Yeah. Uh, who's your biggest influence? Uh, not to sound cliche, it, it, it would probably be my grandma. I'm just gonna mention mm -hmm. her, but and uh, my dad, I can't just name one, but uh. I would, I would probably say David Fujinski overall. That's awesome. Yeah, I would have to say him because when I met him, bro, I, you know, I was I was already weird in, into my stuff, but when I met him, it really it really did you know help me a lot, you know, 
because I was, I was, I was, I was doing, I was improvising, I was reading, you know, I was, I was getting into all these different aspects with him, and hanging with him, you know, you know, just fellowshipping with him. It wasn't just about music. We was eating, we was hanging, we was, you know. So yeah, it was, it was Fuse. It still is. Yeah. Oh, there you go. We love yeah. Fuse. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, let me see. Um, well, I can guess the answer to this question. I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, NBA player agent asks, did you ever get into Jimi Hendrix? Somewhat. Somewhat. You know, a lot of people say I'm the Jimi Hendrix of bass. I hear that so much when I'm really not. Really, Jimi Hendrix didn't even play upside down. He actually played left-handed. <laughs> Right, I don't think a lot right. of people know that. Like he didn't play upside yeah. down like like Albert King. He actually had the the thick E string where his head is, and, and the the, the right. thin E string. Like yeah, like no, no. Well, yeah, I I, I love Jimmy Hendrix, but I wasn't. I really didn't. No, I know it may sound weird, but not really. Hey, man, he, he's, he's a bad he's a bad MF, but no, <laughs> no. Please don't be man, mad at me, people. I'm sorry, but no. Uh, no, nah, ain't nobody gonna be mad at you, man. Okay. Don't even worry about that. You know, yeah. please. Yeah. Um, and and, and it, it, so, like you mentioned about playing upside down. Uh, now refresh my memory. Uh, are are you a lefty or a righty? I'm a right-handed. Um, yeah, I'm right-handed. I'm right-handed, but I play left-handed. But, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and and you've always played like that. Mm-hmm. Since I was like. I just talked to my dad about it. He just reminded me, like, he, when he gave me my guitar, the first guitar he gave me, I just flipped it over. And my mom said, turn it, turn it the other way. And my dad said, leave him alone. And I, I've been playing that way ever since. And my dad plays right-handed. I mean, right-handed. Right. So I, don't, I don't know wow. why. I don't know why. I just, yep. Hey, well, don't change it. It's, it works perfect. <laughs> I ain't too late now because I can't play the other way. Too big. <laughs> yep. Uh... Uh, all right, we just answered that question. Uh, we just answered that question. Um, oh, man, so many uh, good questions here. All right, post-genre again. Um, now that you've worked with Mavis and George Clinton, anyone on your short list of people you wish you could work with? I guess that's what that says. Um, let me see here. I, I definitely want to do something with Tyler, the creator, you know, my, on my pop Ooh. stuff. I, I love him, man. He, he, you know, he really, really opened the doors for us weird people. But I, I, yeah, I love, I, I want to eventually do something with him. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I would love to do something. Um, who else? I don't know. I'm sure he'd be thrilled to work with you too. Uh, I don't, I really don't know. That's, a question like that is so hard for me to ask because I have so many yeah, they're hard. It's like it's like, but I don't know. Tyler, the creator. Uh, I like to do something with Erica Badu, like a song or something. I don't know. I, I I bet that'll come a lot quicker than you think. Yeah, but John McLaughlin yeah. too. I want to I want to sit down with John. Just sit down with him. Yeah. Oh, Especially his his Indian stuff because I really love the Indian classical stuff, all the right. dramas and stuff. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I I just saw I saw him in uh, in Europe just a few days ago. Man, he's still killing it. Yeah, man. yeah. Shout out, shout out to the great John McLaughlin. Still, mm -hmm. still doing it. Um. Uh, we got so many questions here. I'm not going to hit you with all of these. Obviously. That's cool. I don't, I don't care. Uh, um. Can we give Norwood Fisher some love? Oh, uh, he bad. He a bad man. That's all I gotta say. I know about all these people. They just bad. I probably don't mention them a lot, but yeah, they 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 bad. Yeah, he bad. <laughs> yeah, yep. Uh, bad man. So many bad cats out here. Yep. Um. All right. Uh, here's an interesting question. Uh, it's sort of a long one, so I'm going to ask it before I put it up on the screen. Okay. It says, uh, to me. Mono is a superhero. My question is, what was the moment he became what we know as Mono Neon with the whole uniform and style? Uh, it it kind of started at Berkeley. I started like wearing the high visibility uh, 
a neon cap, then it went on to the pans. Then when I left Berkeley, I, I moved back with my grandma. And in the back room, that's when I started watching a lot of John Cage interviews. I started listening to Milton Babbitt, Stockhausen, uh, Morton Feldman, all these avant-garde people. That's when I started getting to uh, Dadaism because of John Cage. Because he was, I guess he was friends with Marcel Duchamp or something or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I started getting to that and I started putting a sock on my base because I was into ready-made art. I don't, it, it's just weird how I really, I was just in my grandma's room just like reading music dictionaries on the internet, just watching John Cage interviews. I started writing a manifesto and I just, I was just, it was just something. I just wanted to be this thing. You know, sometimes I regret it because I'm trying to keep up with it because I'm trying to keep up with my ideas and stuff. But I don't know. I just, it just, it just came to be. I don't know. And I, I love neon lights and, 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 and I just got into neon colors and stuff. I always like colors, but I really took it to heart that I wanted to be that. So, yeah. That's it. it do, you have, uh, do you have any siblings? I have half siblings. You know, okay. I, I really don't talk to them. I talk to my sister sometimes. I have a brother and sister in yeah. Italy. I have two sisters here and a brother. I really don't talk to them, you know, but they, you know, it, it's like, you know, that's life. Oh, good. Because <laughs> yeah. as, as creative as you are and uh, as much of a thinker as you are, it just kind of makes me wonder. It's like, um, you know, you don't find people with that sort of intense creativity. And, um, you know, I, I also have, uh, I have two half siblings mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it's just, I always think I'm hard to be around. Cause like, you know, I'm always in my music all the time. So I can't be around people who, you know, yep. Yep. It's like, oh, there he is again, yep, looking at yep. the old movies. And, yep. you know, it's like, man, you watch that scene like 10 times mm -hmm. in a row. I was like, I know, I'm, I'm in it. <laughs> I watch Car Wash every day. Cause I just, <laughs> you dig? I love the sound. I love to just, I, I don't know. Yeah. I just, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think I watch, uh, well, I don't need to watch Lean on Mean every day because I think yeah. that whole movie is in the hard drive of my brain. Yeah. Um, let me see. Um, uh, I'm just going to ask you a couple of more questions. Um, it's all good. Let me see. Uh, here's a question. What was the main reason for you going to Berkeley? Um, I, I thought I would, honestly, I thought I would really like it. But when I got there, I, I was like, I want to go back home. But I, I stayed for two years. Mm. And, it, and I really, honestly, I really didn't go to class. I was just hanging around David Fujinski. And I, I, sometimes I went to Wallace to play and I was just yeah. hanging around just, you know, musicians and just, I guess you call it networking and just getting to, right. you know, know people and just play and, you know, but I'm glad I went, but I, I don't know. I just wanted to be around musicians. I thought I did, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, man, your, your journey is so interesting and just is, is captivating. So everything that you've done, it's, uh, is killing. I'm trying. Uh, Oh, uh, here's a base uh, tech nerd question. Uh, what's your favorite setting when using your whammy pedal? Um, uh, one octave up. It's on, the, it's on the right side of the pedal. That's the only setting I use. And I use it as a wah-wah. Uh -huh. like, I just got my dad hip to it. I gave him a, a whammy. He's you know, trying to get him hip to it. And David Fujinski is another influence for my usage of a the whammy pedal, how he uses the whammy bar on his guitar. Right, so, right. Yeah. And, and Prince, too. Like, and when I was at Paisley, he had, they built me a pedal board, and he had a, a whammy on it. And how he uses the whammy. That, on the, that on the board? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. wild. Uh, let me see. Um... No, so many good ones here. When is when is your next show in Memphis? Uh, I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, don't want to play in Memphis. I'm sick of Memphis. No, I'm joking. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's always weird with the hometown, right? Yeah.
Oh man. Okay, let me see. Uh Um, <sighs> Ashley Chanel triple seven asks, what's the best advice you have been given from fellow musicians that you have carried with you? Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> I suck at answering these questions. Hold on. <laughs> Dang. You know, y'all can. Oh, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. I don't know. Uh, uh, what's the. <laughs> that that right know. there was a great answer. <laughs> I really don't know. I just, I just, I just know what I should do. I just feel it. I just, I just yeah. know. I just know what I should do. And of course, people have given me advice on what to do. And I just, I really don't remember the words. I just remember. Sure. What, what path I should take. I really don't remember everything. I just know, okay, you should go that route because he's telling you or she is telling you, okay, do this, go this route. And it's like, I just, I just know what I should do. Right. And, and right. it's important just to, to um, I would say this, it's, it's important to surround yourself with people that are really, that are really caring about your path, you know, just that are, that are really trying to help you and really investing, not just money, but just time. And knowledge yeah, and wisdom. That's right. There's, I think somebody on here, a friend of mine, Jackie Clark, he took the time to really, you know, took, take me on his wing. There's a few people like uh, Calvin Barnes, Lance Lucas, a lot, a lot of guys from church that really took me under their wing and like and really shaped me to, for like who I am now, they really shaped, shaped that. You know, right. it wasn't just me. Right. Right. You know, of course, I, no one told me, you got to practice. That was me. I, I came home and was like, I got to get my right. shit together. You know, but right, right. You know, right. you know, yeah. You just, you just know. That's the, exactly. that's the advice, and I'm still trying to get yeah. my shit together. It's like I'm not there yet. I'm just, I'm trying to get it. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, um, I see a comment coming in. <clears throat> These are some really, really great comments. Uh, you can't advise a visionary. Uh, oh, that goes Lance. I'm sorry. Uh, is that is that your boy? Yeah, I just mentioned him. Like Lance, yeah, and DJ Brown too. And all them people. Ah, oh, yeah, there they go. Yeah, I see him. Uh, um, let me see. Let me go back to where the questions are. Uh... Ah, here's a good one. Any chance you and Thundercat collaborate for a song? I love that man. I really do. Yes. I don't. Yeah. I really don't talk about him a lot, but I, I love Thundercat because he's he's amazing. All, his whole family, just amazing. I love every time I get a chance to be around him. I love him. I really do. Yeah. And hopefully, we get a chance to do something together. You know, because he's 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 another one that's really opening doors for a lot of a lot of people. You know? Yes. And you know, especially us young people that's really trying to make it. He's really he's really doing it, and I really appreciate him for for someone like him really staying true to himself and just really doing the shit. Like he's he yeah. hasn't like that's the dude and so many others. You know, yeah. I would love to do something yeah. with him. He's a he's bad. All of his whole family, Ronald, all of his daddy and mama, all of them, just right. incredible right. musicians. Yeah. You hear that, Thunder I love Cat? you, Thundercat. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Brother Bruner. Mm -hmm. um, yes, let's see. We, we're going to take it out with one last one. Um, oh, man. We gotta, let me make, make this a good one. Uh, man, look at all these questions. Thank you all. Um, oh, man. There must be a lot of questions. You know what's going on? Oh man, look, this stuff is going all the way down. I'm scrolling all the way. Let me see. Uh, it's all good. I can answer all of them. Come on. <laughs> man, I, uh, let me see. Um, Do I have perfect uh, pitch? Uh, uh, I don't uh, have perfect pitch. I'm just looking at the questions. I'm just yeah, looking. yeah, yeah, right, right. Yep. Uh, uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask. I'm I'm going to end with this one because this okay. is a good question. Uh, your favorite bass player that <laughs> played with Prince. Oh boy, y'all gonna y'all trying to get me killed around here? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hi, man. Rhonda. 
Yeah. <laughs> man. Oh, shoot. Man. Yeah, that's a hard one. I'm going to answer it, though, but let me let me go and get my mind right uh, for the criticism. No, I'm joking. I would have to say uh, Sonny T. Well, it's, it's really nothing against nobody, but, like, well, you know, Sonny, Sonny T played upside down just like me. So I, I look at that as, like, dude. And, and Prince used to mention him a, a lot, you know. Because he said, I think somebody told me he reminded me of like Sonny T. Anything you throw at him, he, he and he said that about me. It's like, oh. So it probably has to be Sonny T. And Brown Mark, too, bro. It's like that. Brown Mark, yeah, that's, that's that's a soft spot for me, Brown Mark. Yeah. But all of them, all of them just were, you know, were different. But I would have to say Sonny, the whole MPG, yeah. Michael Bland, just him right. and Michael Bland, like, dude, is untouchable. Still untouchable to this day. Yes, a bad, bad, bad man. Yep. Hey, man, I, I can't tell you how much fun this has been, rapping with you and just getting to chill and rap with you, bro. I tried. And uh, I, I look forward to hanging out with you in Newport, brother. And, uh, you know, let's let's just hang, man, and, 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 and chill, talk some more music. Yeah, give me some Crown Royal and Coke. <laughs> Well, I, I'll bring the crown roll for you, but I'm gonna go with kettle one. You, you cool with that? That's fine. You know what I'm saying? Brown, brown and clear. That's okay. What do, do it. Okay. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for joining us this evening on Live Wax. My guest has been the one and only Mono Neon. You are a bad, bad, beautiful man. And uh, you too, uh, Kristen McBride. Oh, thank you, my brother. <laughs> Let me see. Next week is uh, next Tuesday, the 26th. I don't know who my guest is going to be, uh, but, you know, you'll find out at some point. But uh, we hope you tune in uh, next Tuesday evening. And until then, y'all be cool. Brother Thomas, you take care of yourself, and we, uh, we'll catch up on the rebound. Thank you so much, man. All right, baby. Be cool. All right. Later, y'all. Okay.